Now is the CEO of Cureleaf, Joe Lasardi. Joe, good to be with you today. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. Um, Joe, I, I want to first understand a, a little bit about how you are operating the company to be able to achieve a better profit picture versus what we're seeing here in Canada. What's going on in terms of your operations? Yeah, I think it's important to highlight that the U.S. market is structurally different than Canada in a very important way, which is that U.S. operators can be vertical, meaning they can control the whole supply chain. So in most of our markets, we cultivate, we manufacture, and we retail our own products under our own brands. And so that gives us an advantage because we can control the quality of the products and enjoy margins all up and down the supply chain. So that, that is, to your point, a very uh, important distinction. When you do take a look, though, at the Canadian market, um, where do you think we could make improvements so that the profitability is a little bit more advantageous to the companies and importantly to the shareholders? Where in this chain? Yeah, well, I think that having manufactured products will be an important step for the Canadian market, which hopefully is on the horizon. If the provinces open up more stores, then that clearly will open up more retail points of outlets for them to sell their products. So I think that, you know, Canada is probably just a little bit behind in their development, but clearly looks like a promising picture as the markets unfold in a more mature way. Which in some ways is a little bit uh, ironic, just given the fact that we have moved to, to legalize this across the board nationwide, that, right. that we are falling behind. I I think that's where a lot of investors struggle with trying to understand. But, but definitely one of the bottlenecks does appear to be in terms of the retail selling ability. It, it, would you agree with that? You know, that seems to be the case. To be very candid, we're, we're a U.S. operator yes. focused on the U.S. markets. And so, you know, my analysis may not be <laughs> as meaningful as other people's. But what I'll say is, unlike Canada and the United States, you know, we operate state by state frameworks and we're able to open stores. We have 28 stores. Uh, uh, after we announced a new store this week in Florida, we have 50 stores across the country. And I think that's a key part of our success in the U.S. And, and so that leads to the question of demand. And, and that's one of my biggest question marks when we do see you know, the, the poor results in Canada or less than expected. And I can appreciate your perspective. You're very much focused on the United States. But what do you see as the true demand? What kind of behavior are you seeing change with the possibility of, of being able to go to a retail store and, and buy cannabis? Well, I think south of the border, you know, in the U.S., we believe it's about a $100 billion market. And even still today, only about 10% of that is transacted legally. So we think we have a huge amount of headroom and space for more demand. And um, that's showing in the numbers. For example, in Florida, it's one of the fastest growing cannabis markets in the country. 275,000 patients, 100,000 patients in the pipeline. So we're going to see huge growth in the U.S. all through 2020. And sorry, I just want to be really clear. In terms of the size of the market in the United States, you see it as what? We think it's about a hundred billion dollar market. Okay, um, and how do you see the industry in the United States growing? How do you capture that one hundred billion dollar market? Well, we have 33 states now that have medical programs. We'll have 11 states that have adult use programs in 2020. I'm highly confident that at the ballot box next year, more states will approve adult use bills, likely in New Jersey and Arizona at a minimum. And so I think more states will adopt adult use programs and more states will adopt medical programs next year. So it'll just be a progression of more states uh, joining the marijuana uh, programs. And, and what does that mean in terms of any type of federal legislation? Are we going to continue to see this evolve state by state? And, and is that OK? Or what would you rather see? Well, I, I think we've clearly reached more than a tipping point with 33 states and the majority of Americans now living in states where medical cannabis is legal. Um, we had an important bill pass the House, the SAFE Act, with massive bipartisan support. Uh, we actually had an important vote today out of the Ju Judiciary Committee in the House that um, passed the MORE Act out of the um, Judiciary Committee, and that's another positive sign for cannabis. And I think the conflict between federal and state law will be resolved at some point in the near future. But it doesn't seem as though it's any type of inhibitor to your business and your growth. Ironically, it's not. We're, we can operate state by state and keep showing uh, huge growth, quarter over quarter. What's next in terms of um, your company development? How are you looking at your strategy in terms of products, retail store openings, uh, merger and acquisition activity? What are you thinking there? 
Sure, so we're gonna close, you know, select on January 1st. We'll close our grassroots transaction in Q1. That'll put us in 19 states with the ability to open up 131 stores. Combined today, we already have more than 70 stores. And so we're really gonna be focused on executing on what we're doing, opening up our remaining 60 stores and showing growth uh, like we have in the past couple quarters. And what's the path to further profitability? Well, I think as our, as our operations scale, we continue to show our margins expanding. Our margins expanded just from Q2 to Q3. I think that will continue to happen as we get maturity and markets in which we've made big capital investments. And so I think profitability will only rise in the coming quarters. From a cash flow perspective, um, Cowan writes that the cash flow concerns are not warranted. It seems though you've got some, uh, a handful of, of some significant investors as well. Can you walk us through a little bit of the capital structure that you have and expectations? Sure, we finished Q3 with about $91 million of cash on our balance sheet. We have very supportive investors, like you point out, including our executive chairman, Boris Jordan. So I think we're very comfortable with our balance sheet and, and, and our ability to actually raise capital um, that are in terms that make sense for the company. Joe, when you take a look at the, um, the cannabis companies that are out there that are publicly traded, and I, I showed our viewers at the top of our uh, interview just some of the stock price performance of the big ones in Canada, Aurora, Canopy as an example. Um, how, when you talk to investors about investing in cannabis companies, your company, how do you describe um, the path, the, the strategy, the path, perhaps some of the volatility that they might expect to see or not. What's that messaging? Well, I think it's important to say that these are still emerging markets. Progress is not linear. There's going to be ups and downs. But at least when I talk about Careleaf, what I explain is that we're a vertical business, and that's critically important. And so we're enjoying margin up and down the whole supply chain. And for us, it's very much about controlling that and making sure our products have high quality and consumers respond to what we're doing. And that's how we're building a brand. And I'm highly confident in our investment thesis. And Joe, I should ask as well your thoughts on all the vaping concerns as of late. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's been a lot of um, headlines around vaping. I think that as more information comes out from the CDC, for example, it's clear that the majority of the problems are coming from the illegal market. And I think that's just signals that we need regulated, tested cannabis. And consumers are having a greater awareness of what they're putting in their body, which we hope will push them back to the regulated markets where they belong. Okay. Joe, we'll leave it there. Great to catch up with you. Thank you.